Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. It's with great pleasure to have you join our live webinar now today, Vertebra Digital Transformation Series, and this is Series 4. The COVID-19 outbreak has brought about new, sophisticated, and flexible opportunity with the use of technology. Presently, we at Vertebra have been working around the clock to ensure you have a seamless experience using any of our platform. Today, we'll be discussing COVID-19, digital solutions for the health sector in a critical time. During this session, please kindly watch out for a call, an opinion poll during the session as we would like to ensure that we are addressing your pain points. Please feel it when it co comes up on your screen. However, at the end of this session, you will be able to take strategic decision for the right time and you'll be informed about the Latin challenges in the health sector. At this point, I'll call on my colleague, Adeni Ienka Adeni Kiji. He will be facilitating the session from now. Thank you, Ienka. Okay, good afternoon, everyone. I'm sorry for the each day. And uh, I'd like to welcome each and every one of you. Um, we take this not for granted uh, that you have graced us this time to uh, address the topic at hand, being uh, digital solutions in the health sector in the critical time as this. As we uh, proceed, um, we'll be looking at uh, the key critical issues that we are facing at such a time as this. And um, I know the pandemic is upon us. A number of people have various op opinions if this uh, pandemic is here to stay. Should we be focusing on uh, the post-pandemic era, that's the post-COVID era, what are the challenges that we face, what um, are the problems in the health sectors that we are looking at or uh, feel are impacting the way our healthcare practitioners take care of our patients, ensuring that they have better access to healthcare. Now, um, it is noteworthy that a couple of people have been thinking, even before now, even before the pandemic, even before the critical time, a lot of people have come together in a research trying to see how they can identify these key challenges facing the healthcare systems in Africa. Now, this research was done in November last year before uh, the pandemic began. And what were their findings? It is also good to state that respondents came from 11 African countries with a, a couple of them coming from Nigeria. More than half of them came from Nigeria, which shows that we are bringing this, um, um, identifying these pro pro problems down straight to home. Uh, we have health practitioners here in Nigeria also seeking to identify these problems and then not only identifying them, preferring solutions on how uh, these um, challenges can be tackled. And um, another thing that comes to note is the method in which these researches were done, the method, method in which information were gathered. That brings to mind um, the terms in the era has this, which is a crowdsourced monitoring information. Crowdsourced monitoring information has to do with electronic questionnaires being gathered uh, for, uh, from patients, these, uh, they having their, their willing to participation based from their, their devices, um, answering through social medias, answering polls, just like we are doing now, you know. So they are attributes that are being put out there to ensure that information are gathered to help our health care system, to see that people are derived and get better decisions in um, engaging and solving the challenges that we have in Nigeria and in Africa, especially in the health tech space. Looking down at the, the, the key findings that they had, um, one of the key findings was um, lack of good resource management. Of course, it, it, it's uh, it's cut across a, a couple of sectors, but it has really shown even in our healthcare space lack of good resource management. So you have you have um, the uh, uh, practitioners, the hospital administrators having difficulty in managing the resources they have. Uh, another problem was weak information management systems. Systems, uh, of course, these days, um, a number of health facilities, be it um, the logistic end, be it the diagnostic end, 
all have some form of systems put in that uh, which information, health information have been passed around, which is the next uh, problem that was identified. So weak health information also ensures that uh, the health clinicians have fragmentized patient's record. This also can be a problem because it doesn't allow for uh, easy and good decision. It doesn't give enough reliable data to, uh, to make good uh, decisions in our healthcare space. Another problem that was also identified was poor technological advancement. And as you agree with me, in our climb in Africa, uh, that has been a challenge. Uh, where you have technology and you have um, innovators coming up with solutions to problems, you also have the barriers of those that do not understand how to use these systems, do not understand uh, the approach of um, um, the internet of medical things, which are here to stay. So that's also a problem. Narrowing, narrowing down these problems to our hospitals, our clinics, our other health facilities, like um, the community pharmacies, the diagnostic centers, um, name it, all other health sector identified um, um, uh, facilities. The pain points generally are the time management and service delivery. Of course, if time is not properly managed, this can increase the stress and uh, the increased stress of the hospital staff, of uh, the staff of which of the health, whichever of the health facilities and affects the, the delivery that they do to patients. And of course, these days we are beginning to see a rise in uh, um, um, law cases as uh, against bad services that were rendered by our health uh, clinicians, our health experts. Another uh, pain point narrowing down to uh, local uh, facilities is also inefficient inventory manage, so you, management. So you have um, a couple of understock resources for the hospital. You also have overstock resources, and then you it, it all it all boils down to um, lack of proper management of resources in the hospital or in the health facilities, the clinic, the pharmacies. Name what you know, these are pain points, and they cut across irrespective of um, the facility. Record management and fragmentation, narrowing down is a big case. These days we talk of preventive uh, medicine and we talk of continuous uh, medical information of the patients being in one place. But what you have is so many people or so many facilities have some form of systems that are not up to standards, do not have the proper uh, uh, guided interoperability standard why they were being developed and hence what you see is that they have fragmentized patient medical records. So you have patient records in piecemeal at various places. And this ensures or this makes the, some health practitioners not have the full picture before coming up with their uh, diagnosis. Lack of reliable data for informed decision making is as a result of um, the record fragmentation, as well as not even having some of those information either though. Apart from, time, apart from that, timely management also ensures that patients' lives are saved on time. So if you get this information on time, if they get the necessary information in the right piecemeal, in the right order, and in the way that clinicians will understand, they will go a long way in saving the, the number of lives that they've been saving either to. Other health spots in the health uh, care space that we have now include the quality of care management, which has to do with um, the, 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 the watching, the attributes, the characteristics, the quality of the care that are given by our clinicians, the, 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 the services that are rendered, the feedback, and then the general output, which is the health care of the patient across the various service centers that you have in, in, in the hospital or in the pharmacy or be it in the diagnostic center, whichever of the healthcare facility we are talking about. You also have procurement management. It is been a hot spot for a number of health facilities. Here you have malpractices uh, where procurements are in, uh, mixed up with fraud and name it. You also have health insurance management. This is another um, critical uh, uh, issue for a number of health facilities. There, with the change in trend now, where you see a number of patients are getting access to see their clinicians outside the um, uh, orthodox four walls of the hospitals, there pose the questions 
who stands to be blamed where they are breach of a uh, 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 contract where um, patients are affected maybe by wrong and, uh, prescription of drug or diagnosis who who is held liable yeah, so you have health insurance management being a key point there especially for a critical time as this where uh, the norm is changing account management of course we know how finicky it can be with accounts and how delicate it is with money account management ensures uh, proper account management ensures the continuity of every investment or business and so also it applies to our healthcare facilities and uh, and the healthcare space population management has to do with ensuring that every information the records of the patient put in good uh, um, um, aggregated uh, um, spaces ensuring that the clinicians get good outputs and overall picture of the patients they are dealing with is later on translated even for public health purposes helping the general uh, country at large and even the continent at large so these are areas these are all sports that have been uh, have been challenges that we when we narrow down the research that was done there have been challenges before this um, critical time. But you know, as the as the time has elapsed, as we have all seen now with this pandemic, what it has done is that it has it has it has emphasized our inactiveness. It has shown that most of the uh, challenges that were either though identified and have been existing before now and that we're not taking care of, they've been they've been they've been enlarged. They've been thrown at us on our face. So we now see them even happening as a time as this. And what then? is a solution. What then did they come up with as a solution in uh, their research? Yes, the truth is that technology is shaping our lives and all of, all of the uh, um, results, all of the uh, information, the solution that they prepared all are surrounded by technology. Technology has come to um, stay for us in a time as this where it is now more of our companion than even our physical uh, um, our beings. We rely on technology for, for information. We rely on it for speaking to our clinicians. We rely on it even to purchase uh, our goods and services. So technology has shaped our life and it's still shaping our life. And so therefore, uh, it, is, it is nice to see that even before now, they preferred the solutions around technology and even at an era as this, we are seeing that that solution still sounds. Technology is the answer to all these problems that have been listed either to. Now, when we say technology is the answer, what then, well, what then is the technology? Is it just any technology? Do we just get um, other devices, maybe musical gadgets, or you know, name, name them in whatever area? They don't just apply here. Yeah. What applies are the digital tools, as some people would like to call it digital health, or some people in the broad term will say telemedicine. Now, how, how do we identify those digital tools? Those digital tools will be the internet of medical things. Nowadays, we can see that we now have devices connected to sensors and also have um, um, internet um, capabilities of transferring information from be it a thermometer, um, a toothbrush, our handphones. You, you, you now see, especially in the rural area, you have medical kiosks which help um, with a number of devices that ensure that, you know, with uh, the information gotten of patients, they are able to be passed across to um, health professionals at other areas, maybe outside the locality or to even the hospitals so that there is better monitoring of our patients. So. The Internet of Medical Things is one of the digital tools that we have in this area. And maybe a question that will be posed now for our, our health professionals and um, also the country at large uh, is to start thinking of how then do we ensure that there are standards across the rapid rising um, um, devices, varying rising de uh, devices in the Internet of Medical Things. How then do we also ensure that the information being passed are uh, passed to the right people with consent of the patient. What are the regulatory um, terms put in place to ensure that they are not thefts of data, they are not thefts of patient data, which is sensitive. 
another uh, digital tool will be the um, health information systems, which uh, are applicable in the hospitals. They can be tailored down to the electronic medical record systems, which are used in clinics. And um, you also have that of the uh, diagnostic centers. You also have um, that of the um, pharmacy uh, um, facilities, the community pharmacies. They all have systems that have been tailored to suit different, different um, specialties. These are also digital tools to use in an era as this. Another digital tool would have to be crowdsourced information. Earlier on, we, we talked about the respondents that uh, are responded to uh, the research that was earlier carried on. Now, in a time as this, where information is critical, where information has to be timely, crowdsource disease monitoring is now a trend where you get a number of people to participate in um, answering questionnaires or even from using of their devices, their handheld devices, um, be it using of their gadgets. These days, we see a number of people also using um, wristbands. Information from there can be easily gathered and this can help uh, prefer good information, help even uh, regulatory bodies, help uh, uh, um, hospitals and then public health officials take quick information that will help uh, the situation. It is also one key thing that has also helped in some part of the world in ensuring that there is better contact tracing. So crowdsource information, just like uh, using platform platforms also like social media with Twitter is another way uh, to go and they are digital tools of now. You would uh, as well agree with me that we are coming of age also in Africa where we now have the rise of um, a lot of medical practitioners on our social media presence. You have the doctors who um, I mean, to say some people say shouldn't be on social media. But what they are eventually doing is they are passing useful information to patients. They are enlightening the public and as well from polls and questionnaires that they raise they are also participating in cross-sourced information. These are digital tools, and these are the digital health tools that are needed for this critical time that we have. Another um, thing to say is that with the rise in attacks on health facilities, on, on um, even the World Health Organization, when I mean attacks, I mean cyber attacks, then another key important digital tool is the cyber security protection. Of course, there's a rise in um, the, the attacks on health facilities, on, 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 on health uh, information, trying to see how they can get that of people. And they are being ex people are being exposed because no one has hitherto talked about securing those information. So a digital tool for this era that is very, very necessary is um, a cyber security protection. Now, as we uh, continue, um, like my colleague has earlier said, I know um, suppose will be um, passed around for you to answer, to also get your own um, feedback to see if the, 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 the challenges, the issues are tailored down to as you might be experiencing in your own um, locality, in your own um, professional space. Talking of the doctor of the future, Thomas Edison, oh, we all, we all know Thomas Edison, uh, the great inventor. He once said that the doctor of the future will give no medicine, but will instruct his patients in care of the human frame, in diet, and the cause and prevention of disease. All we can say in our health space is that this statement of his uh, corroborates uh, the fact that we now practice and we now promote preventive medicine. But the question there is, this coming from an inventor, inventor, how then will these doctors pass across the information, especially in an era where um, patients are scared of going to the health facilities, where our health professionals are the most eats when it comes to uh, contracting the virus. You know, it, the, 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 the instrument to take the patient, the instrument to take the information to the patient to the public to enlighten them to help in the prevention of disease of these diseases are uh, therefore the digital tools as we have earlier highlighted now thomas edison also once said that um opportunity is clothed in overalls and people miss it because it looks like work now the nigerian healthcare space looks like work but i tell you it is 
abound with uh, opportunities. Looking at the various uh, um, uh, subsectors in the healthcare space from the pharmaceutical, you would agree with me that there are still challenges there that can be unearthed. So if I would suggest a further proof area in the health tech space and identifying problems, each of these subsect, subsect, subsectors have their own challenges. And if one would take out time to look at them, look for them, they would unearth opportunities that would also yield um, profitable uh, gains. Looking at the pharmaceutical uh, subsector, of course, there are, there are challenges of how well in an era where um, uh, professionals are trying to encourage what we call medical distancing. How do they now get across the information? Either told that a uh, pharmaceutical uh, company may be true, uh, the medical rep will take information to various uh, doctors, various hospitals about their product. How then do you confer this uh, um, um, information? How then do you guide the, the, the clinicians, the physicians about the product, about the new findings on your product? Coming to uh, the EMR, the HMIS, a lot of problems are, are abound. We talk of healthcare interoperability. How then do you get a system in one um, uh, facility to talk to another in another place across the globe? How then do you make them understand that, oh, the information passed from this system are regulated by certain standards that ensure that wherever the physician is at the other end, he understands the information of the patient. Telemedicine is now a, 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 one of the new normals that we've been seeing. And in telemedicine, questions abound. How then do you verify that everyone using the telemedicine app, irrespective of the platform, are certified for health professionals? How do you um, guide what what we what I call uh, informatia, where people pass information, false information that are not that have not been proven, even via social media, and a lot of people uh, uh, who have um, um, respect for this intellectuals would think they are they are passing the right information how do we safeguard that how do we uh, ensure that even in our matter maternal health good statistics are being taken are being measured and and we ensure that we can we can also reduce the death rate of both babies and even their mothers we also look at the health insurance industry the subsector it is key to note that now with a, a lot of change in the operations in the healthcare space, who then is held liable for, for uh, wrongs that have been done on the doctor's side, on the patient's side, what were either to the agreements that were put in place, how do we solve these solutions? Health logistics is all one other thing. How then do you get medications across to patients? So these patients eventually have a way of talking to their um, physician using um, digital tools. How then do they get their medications? Haven't been prescribed, how does it get to them? We have public health. We all saw the different scenarios play out uh, from um, the NCDC, talking about collection of results, talking about how um, there were disagreements about results from various things. How then do we solve the collection? How do we make it real time? How do we make information the past? Because as we all know, it is not about if another, another pandemic will come up. It is about when another pandemic will arise. The public health um, sector, sub sector in the healthcare space has to start looking at that now. The diagnostics is also there for, uh, um, like we have said, early detection of most of the uh, um, diseases or ailments would help in ensuring that we save lives of patients better than has been done. Now, like he said, Thomas Edison, that on earthing these opportunities that are in overall will ensure that we not only key into the opportunities for economic gains, but we also ensure that our country has a better economic health status. Moving, moving ahead, we earlier mentioned healthcare interoperability. And what that simply means is that ensuring that um, systems, be it the um, Internet of Medical Things, be it uh, um, hospital management information systems, EMRs, or the diagnostic information systems, all pass information across to each other in standards 
that will be understood by all uh, professionals. So that when this information comes, it doesn't come in piecemeal, but is suitable enough for the uh, health practitioner or whoever is reviewing this information to make good use of it. Now, the challenge about this is that there are so many standard uh, regulatory bodies that come up with various standards. So we have, uh, in America, we have the ICD-10, which is the International Classification of Diseases. Uh, and then we have also the Health Level 7, which is also American-based. And then we also have um, SOAP, for, uh, which is um, more British-based. So we have various standards. How then do we know the standards that each of these systems are, are, are being developed with? How then do you ensure that the information passed are uh, ones that will be understood by professionals across the globe or in other states or wherever it is in Africa that so that you have not just a fragmented uh, information of the patient, but you have ample information to make good decisions when um, giving the patient care. This also uh, brings us to medical distancing. The World Health Organization, as well as other notable um, health authorities, have been preferring medical distancing. Now, this depends on um, the perspective that you choose to look at medical distancing. Medical distancing, in the main sense, is ensuring that health officials attend to their patients without physical contact, without being physically in the same room, in the same area, connecting with each other um, from various places, especially through remote means. Now, they've called for this because of the rise in the number of health professionals that have contacted, have contacted the virus. But from the other perspective, there's been a rise, especially a, a case note will be in Philadelphia and also in other parts of the world where there's now a rise in the case of other uh, patients who are being rushed to the hospital uh, because of conditions that are non-COVID related. And these are conditions that if they were earlier um, attended to at the hospitals or they were brought to the hospital earlier, would have been taken care of. The lives of most of the patients would have been saved. They might not have ended up in the emergency room. Now, this poses the question, when is it not what when is it okay? When does a patient know that he has to use um, the digital tools, the, the telemedicine um, um, tools available, or when does he go straight to the hospital to see a clinician? How then does a patient know um, um, each of the stages of whatever situation he is? In? Of course, not everybody is aware and not everybody would know, especially where we have silent, um, silent killers like hypertension. So these are questions that are being posed now, and um, it should stimulate questions on our regulatory bodies. How then do they come up with frameworks? How then do they come up with regulatory frameworks that will guide even the healthcare, healthcare space as well as the health tech space so that there are good prompts that can prompt patients? Of course, um, more to this on the side of medical distancing is that apart from having real access to the patients, apart from having real access to the patients, you also see that it is also good to, um, um, that tools are connected, um, devices are connected, and then um, you have a number of things that can ensure that the hospital and then the, 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 the healthcare professionals are just are protected, not just because you are limiting them from coming to the hospital, but at the same time, they are being guided they have prompts on when to report to the hospital. Is a typical scenario will be um, um, a, a company came up with a solution where thermometers were attached with sensors and there were um, internet capabilities that sent the temperature readings of patients to a monitored system where healthcare professionals or their doctors can monitor the spikes in their temperature. And where you have a number of spikes um, um, are coming up so much, then it gives you an indication of how to prepare your resources, how to know that that area has a number of people being infected, and then it can also give you a pointer to if there are endemics in that area. So medical uh, distancing has its pros and as well has its cons. And I believe that um, now would be a time for a regulatory body to start thinking as well as other healthcare professionals start thinking how then do we go about this so that we don't just lose a number of people 
who are trying to stay responsible as we have advised them, stay home, be responsible. And as they are staying home now, there are other um, disease conditions which is also affecting and also making them um, lose their lives. That being said, we have our own solutions. Like I said um, earlier, the healthcare space is big and, and there are opp the opportunities abound. So if um, one will look out for those problems, whichever overall they are putting on and then uncover them, we would see not only just the problem, but the solution and as well the gains that come with it. For us, our own um, solution is Genesis. And Genesis is not just a product, but it's a solution in the sense that it, apart from having physical systems, there are also um, advices, consultative services that are preferred to ensure that your facility gets the best tailored suit system that answers the problems at hand. Looking at uh, the problems at hand, we earlier mentioned that interoperability is one key standard. So what uh, Genesis, HMIS, or the EMR, as it may, and as will um, suit various facilities, be the clinic or uh, a tertiary or secondary uh, um, uh, health facility, are being guided with interoperability standards. So Genesis is being developed has been developed using ICD-10, that's the International Classification of Diseases um, version 3, and then it is also HL7 compliant. Now what Genesis also does that it ensures that you have seamless patient registration and record, it ensures that the HMO uh, um, saga, the area where you have a number of claims issue, a number of uh, 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 to waiting, sending mails back and forth to your to the the various HMOs and then the argument between the hospitals whether the plan or the benefit covers the patients or either to if the patient can access care is all taken care of by the system because um, all these are pre-uploaded on the system and the system is also uh, um, enhanced with appointment bookings and follow-up reminders to ensure that patients don't just forget that they have an appointment with their physicians they are reminded, they are follow-ups, and like I said, there are also prompts that ensure that even the clinician is ready for the patient that he wants to see. Automated generated report is one of the population health management uh, uh, tools that the system is um, enabled with. It is equipped with this and ensures that even your facility can also contribute to the better health outputs of our community. Genesis also is a bespoke, bespoke system that can be tailored to suit various practices, be it your uh, uh, various specialty that your uh, hospital uh, or your health facility runs, the system is tailored to suit that, not just by developers, but because we also have the earth consulting outfit that ensures that your process are re-engineered to ensure best practices. Now, Genesis is a web-based responsive system now what that means is that you can have all your various points of care at a glance on a single page so that should your um, uh, professionals be it on ward run or they have reasons to be mobile while taking care of patients yeah mobility is enhanced being using the system with every point of care on the same place the other thing is that we also mentioned the rising attack in uh of, of health uh, uh, information on various systems. Genesis is well um, secured, ensuring that patients' information are secured. And there are also consents to ensure that um, consents are properly guided, both on who has the, uh, who needs or has access to information using this system. It doesn't just stop there. We did talk about not having um, fragmented patient information. So apart from uh, the Genesis HMIS, or the EMR as best suits your organization. We also have the uh, telemedicine application arm of Genesis. And what that allows is, it allows patient onboarding, it allows uh, appointment booking as well, even from the app. There are third party integrations, should you have um, other uh, systems already running in your facility. And then there are chats, audio and video uh, capabilities. There are accesses to 
uh, the diagnostic result, be it laboratory or radiology, it is scalable, it is responsive as well as genesis, and you could get the patient's medical record. Now, one unique thing with this is, unlike um, the various um, telemedicine apps that you have out there, it ensures that whatever information is taken by the clinicians on the telemedicine app can also uh, be transferred to the EMR, be it using Genesis or using any other um, HMIS or EMR system. So there is continuity of, continuity of care and there are no um, patient fragmented information. So just as a summary, our own solutions are uh, the Genesis HMIS or EMR as well as um, specific bespoke build system to suit your health facility. And then we have the telemedicine app. And so um, now will be a time for me to take your questions. And then as the question and answer segment goes on, if you do have uh, questions, you could also um, send your email or inquiries to uh, the displayed contacts. Thank you. Thank you so very much, Inka. It was a great pleasure to have listen to you. So I hand over to Adela Yomi Patrick to facilitate the question and answer session. Adela, thank you. Okay, thank you very much, Mosu, and thank you very much, Inka, for that insightful presentation. Our first question is from Mr. Francis Bioko. He signified that he would like to speak. So you can have him unmuted and ask his question. Mr. Francis Obioko. Okay, um, thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, afternoon. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Titus. That was a very good one. Um, okay, I, you said something about the um, social media as part of the whole digitalization process, you know, and the social media and the telemedicine. Yeah, I get that. However, I wanted to ask now, uh, these days we also get to see some doctors who tend to have, um, let's say, um, a, a channel on Twitter or on WhatsApp, and you have people like, especially um, nursing mothers, you know, or, you know, tune into that channel, they ask questions. You ask the question, why you make me the presentation? How do we, you know, get to know the um, qualifications of these doctors? You understand, you know, it's because all manner of persons, you know, tend to use the social media, of course, as part of this digitalization to also make some form of um, a recourse. So how do we manage a situation whereby so many persons, nursing mothers and all that, get to, you know, uh, uh, acquainted with these persons and they get certain information, you know, health-wise, advices. You know, sometimes we don't know how to actually say, okay, what this person is saying is true or not. Like, for example, take for example, I had to caution my wife, you know, I had to question why because of the kind of cancer she got from such platform about a particular drug. We have been associated, so, but because of my own experience, you know, in that field, I had to say, no, I don't think so. Let's do this, let's do that, you know. And so that was it. So that's my question. How do we manage this? Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you very much. Okay, over to you, Inka. Okay, thank you, Francis. Um, like you rightly said, um, it is a challenge and um, it is a call to our regulatory bodies. There needs to be standards, there needs to be regulations around this. Like I said earlier on, a number of people have been misguided. And as well, um, these days where it is easy to come up with um, your title before your name on social media, be it Twitter, uh, Facebook or whatever, no one knows who to believe, no one knows who has the right qualification and the right expertise to answer or prepare advices. So um, what uh, the, the question poses is that we need our regulatory bodies at various levels, nationally, at various state levels, to also come up with standards so that there's, there can be some form of sanity, there can be some form of guidance so that um, a number of people are not misled. And then also there should be legal frameworks. Um, the legal framework will also ensure that we know who is held liable when um, such um, um, unpleasant circumstances happen. Yeah, so uh, currently what we can what we can say is that for most of the telemedicine app, um, 
um, they might have ways which they confirm uh, the physicians that are using their solution. But what we have on our own telemedicine app is that this um, um, telemedicine app is being connected to uh, already uh, developed EMLs. And most facilities that use it, uh, it's their own health um, physicians that would also be consulting with patients on the telemedicine app. So there is a point of reference. The hospitals are points of references. Then also, maybe as an advice, the um, regulatory bodies can also hold be it the um, developing firm that came up with these um, um, solutions as points of reference should something come either to if there are no agreements in place. I believe uh, that should um, answer the question for now. Okay, thank you very much, Ink. And I trust that uh, Mr. Francis Obioko is satisfied with um, your response. So the second question that we have is from Dr. Chine Mirem. He wants to know what prospects digital health would have in Africa, considering that Africa is grappling with electricity, poor health indices, including lack of universal health coverage and insurance. Yes. Um, okay. Great. That's um, uh, another um, critical question that should be asked. And like was one of the key findings from the the research that was done, they also highlighted and pointed to that. And the solution to that, aside technology and using technology to aid it, is that with technology, you now have um, solar paneled um, health kiosks that can be taken to the rural areas, other parts of Africa where technology is an issue. Um, you could have health kiosks that are being powered with um, inverters and then using um, the internet of medical things to ensure that you can have physicians in areas where you have stable internet supply as well as electricity attend to patients, being that they've gotten the useful and ample information with the internet uh, medical devices or um, um, having other uh, clinicians on ground that would um, assess these patients and then transfer the information using the systems that they have. So um, that also with um, us having um, the private partnership also with government, funding some of this would also help. I think that would also help in Africa because not only are we battling technology, not only are we battling electricity, funds might also be some issues in some of the African countries. So I think uh, those are solutions that uh, could be handy right now. Thank you, Inka, for that. There's Bala Seidu has a question. He's raising his hands. So if we can unmute Bala Seidu. Yes, Bala Seidu is well connected to you. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Yes, I, I used to find such kind of lecture very, very interested because what I understand with the medical field as a professional pharmacist that this internet of the teens is the one to take over the field of the medicine sooner or later and there is no way we can run away from it we have to embrace it but we have a lot of challenges the one i just first now i lost my, i raised my hand trying to ask question but i lost connection i have to search for the network go deep go deep before i get a place that i'm well connected so how can you, I had you explain some part of it when I'm connected back, that maybe using the inverter, other things. And then, so how can we manage this problem? My second question is that somebody asked it, but I think he's not more direct and clear about issue of proud. You know, there is a lot of quack, even in the real practice. Here in Kaduna, there, was, there is a person that has been practicing for over 10 years. It is later that they now found out that he's a quack. He's not a fully registered. He has been cheating and injuring individuals. How can you use this, your own system, to advance, to help in finding out the real and qualified medical professional for the provision of service to internet? I rest my case. Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay, okay. thank you. Yeah, thank you for your questions. Uh, I'll take the first one. 
um, the, the first one had to do with the incessant um, power supply or um, internet network um, availability. Now, that is uh, beyond, like I earlier said, that is beyond us. But what we could do to um, serve as uh, temporary solutions to that is use um, um, alternative power supplies, be it the inverters, the solar panel, the uh, kiosk, or um, power supplies. And then another thing to do is also to ensure and add our voice to the already um, rising voices of those clamoring for better services by our various internet service providers. Uh, I think that if, if that is done, addressed by the government and taken as priority, um, with this would almost be a thing of pass for us in um, Africa and in Nigeria. Coming to the second question, which has to do with um, um, certifying the health professionals that use various system or certifying health professionals that uh, practice on various places, especially now where uh, medical distancing will be practiced, where a number of um, patients would be very far from their physicians and would have to use digital tools like the telemedicine app. What I think can happen or what I think is a solution, like I earlier said, is there have to be points of reference. Apart from the government coming up with regulatory frameworks, guardians and standards, to ensure that um, persons who, who pass, who prescribe, or who act in the capacity of health um, professionals uh, have been certified and have been, um, um, what would I say now, have been checked by their various um, organizations, be it um, the associations of um, the, uh, the healthcare part uh, practitioners or even for the pharmacies. One other solution that can happen is that for um, development, software development organization like us, we can also approach uh, various bodies, various organizations to ensure that before you have various people use certain mediums in attending to uh, the public, in attending to patients, they are verified. Maybe some form of certificate verification, maybe some um, attributes ensuring that um, there is an accountable uh, number to such um, personnel attending to patients where it can be verified. Uh, these are discussions that uh, uh, should stimulate should stimulate um, the curiousness on um, the software development um, uh, companies where we at our way advance meets regulatory bodies and see where we can come to a meeting point. Because, like I said, if we don't um, stem uh, the problem coming up now will be in for something else. There will be a lot of cases here and there, and a lot of people will be tied in the battle. So I think uh, that should have answered the question. All right. Thank you very much, Inka. So Mohammed Liman is very interested in the application, and he wants to know how it works. He has hands raised. I don't know if we can also unmute him. Maybe he has additional questions. OK. Yes. Mr. Mohammed Liman. Yeah, good no, uh, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Okay. Uh, thank you for the wonderful presentation, sir. You're welcome. Yeah, it is uh, quite uh, interesting and highly impressive. Uh, I just have a few questions to ask in addition to what she has earlier stated. Uh, I want to find that is telemedicine actually approved in Nigeria? That is, I'm not sure. That is one question. Then is there any other regulatory act that governing the practice of telemedicine in Nigeria? Then thirdly, how do you make draw government attention to this practice in Nigeria, considering the the, the current uh, trend of COVID-19 in the country, that some patient or uh, people don't even want to go to the hospital. The hospital is the last place that some people do not even want to visit at this moment. And part of the solution we need to have in our country today is this uh, telemedicine. Is the government attention really on this? Because when you look at the global community today, the attention is now shifted to ha from having physical contact with the patient to having a telemedicine uh, practice with the patient. And the result is just superb. But we know in our Nigerian content, Coming to bring something of this nature in light, we actually may be having some issues. But uh, how do we draw government attention to this practice? 
Then the last question I want to have do you have any other way that you can make a uh, you'll be able to guide me through on the practice of uh, the digital medicine because I'm in the feed and this is part of the solution I've been struggling for the past few days to 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 to, to come uh, to to practice I have our two facility but I want to move them to telemedicine to see how we can offer solution to those who do not want to go to the hospital again or to those who are in the rural area so that is those thank are my submissions sir thank you thank you for also gracing the webinar we we don't take this for granted now i'll start from the last uh, question how would um, you would um, get to uh, see a demonstration how do you get access to the solution so what you can do is uh, send a mail to the uh, email being displayed right now and you will be contacted you will be contacted and um, other um, steps will be taken where you will be run through how both the telemedicine how the hmis system runs there will be demos and then also what we also offer is an holding process so not only do you get the solutions you also have um, an, an holding process where you are guided and each of your staff are guided at every uh, step of uh, providing or preparing care to your um, uh, prospective patients. Now, like you rightly said, um, a number of patients, a number of hospitals have seen the downturn in um, patients visiting the hospital physically, and um, telemedicine has been the solution. A number of HMOs are also looking to uh, the circle of telemedicine. Now, the, the, the question about regulatory on whether it has been approved has been pushed aside. Of course, in medicine, you would agree with me that uh, the patient's life comes first. And um, as it is, this has been a solution to save a number of lives. Remember why we were talking about uh, medical distancing? We talked about two perspectives. The perspective which you have also talked about uh, of um, notable health authorities like um, the World Health Organization who have um, advised and um, preferred for telemedical uh, distancing using digital mm -hmm. tools to ensure that we reduce the number of health professionals that contract this disease. We also have the other divide, or permit me to say those with another perspective, for the rising number of patients that have uh, uh, now come what may been affected with other ailments, other diseases that are not COVID-19 related. And then the question comes up to, okay, when do they know or which is best? So what, what time or what step do they know that they need to call on or go to the hospital physically or they uh, use telemedicine uh, uh, digital tools? Now, the question around all this and the safety of the patient is that this is also happening right here in Nigeria. A number of hospitals are seeing patients with non-COVID related cases that need urgent care or that need to even be evaluated. Now, for a uh, for a, a health professional to know if a patient needs urgent uh, um, evaluation has to be done with telemedicine. So, um, regulatory wise, um, it is not to play around that, but it is a tool that is helping save lives, and um, it is one that I know a number of hospitals will use. On the aspect where the uh, government or the organizations would lend more voice uh, to this, it is the role of you and I for the public to call forth, to, to state this, to uh, make that uh, awareness known, to call on the nearest um, government representative that we know, so that this is also uh, part of the front burner of um, decisions that have been made. Uh, thank you. I think that I should answer the questions. Okay, thank you, Yinka. Just um, there's another question. Shwaibu Musa wants to know the difference between telemedicine and telehealth. Okay. Now, um, that question, like I like I do say, a number of people, a number of people always um, use the terms interchangeably. Now, when we say telehealth, telehealth actually has to do with the um, use of uh remote means of um, attending to patients ensuring that uh, they get access to care now telehealth in the real sense 
can also be called telemedicine. But where the difference is, is where we have to do with teleconsults, which has to be with um, consulting with a patient over the phone. So I, I guess um, the question would have been the difference between um, telehealth and teleconsults. But um, telehealth and telemedicine are always used interchangeably, which means that not only do you use teleconsult means uh, over the phone call using telemedicine um, app, telehealth also entails monitoring your patients using the internet of medical things, uh, as well as um, um, other um, source of attending to your patients uh, remotely. Okay, thank you, thank you very much. So, um, Eguano Apute has a question. He's showing hands. So, if you can unmute him, please. Eguano Apute. Can we unmute Eguano Apute so we can ask his question? Okay, so while we wait for, for that to happen, let's take this next question from Mogaji Isha. And he wants to know how people that are in computer illiterate can use this system. Okay, quickly, um, that we do by ensuring that we have um, the on-site support staff that an old such uh, people guide them through how to use uh, the, especially the health uh, care professionals, guide them through and hold them. It's part of our and holding process so they get to understand how to use the system and are comfortable to ask those questions so directly to the support staff. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. And another question, okay, so about two people actually are asking if there's any kind, they award any kind of certificate after this webinar. Oh, uh, uh, there, there is no certificate uh, awarded to this okay. There is no. Okay. Okay. All right. So I still have people showing hands. Ewono uh, Apute, can we please unmute him so he can ask his question? Hello. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can. Yes, Good afternoon. Thank you. Oh, okay. Thank you very much for this presentation. It was very insightful. Um, I initially wanted to ask if MDCN um, gives any form of um, like a go ahead to set up telemedicine. And then the second thing I want to find out is, is it that you're, you're, you're offering um, a software or you are running a telemedicine app that people, doctors can register and consult with patients? or you're just um, um, rendering software to various hospitals so that they can better serve their, their clients. Then another thing I want to ask is how secure is your platform? How secure is your platform? Whatever goes on on the platform, is it safe? Are patients' um, information safe considering HIPAA? So that's what I want to say, that's all. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay, so um, like you rightly uh, asked, we are both offering the solution, uh, the software to hospitals. We are also offering the telemedicine app to hospitals and their patients, as well as uh, offering the telemedicine app uh, for um, doctors that intend to use it to uh, consult and assess their patients at various uh, places. For the um, question about the security, I did mention uh, uh, that, that our systems are tightly secured. Of course, you just mentioned one of the interoperability standards, which is EPA. Um, we are also EPA compliant. And then we are looking more at the products and the type of services we render as an organization. Uh, our products are tightly uh, secured. So if you would need more information about um, that, about the technicalities, about our solutions, um, you once you send your email to the uh, email, your questions to the email displayed, you will be um, uh, notably responded. 
All right, thank you very much. We just have one thing from Mr. Francis Obioko. He says that he believes there are certain limitations with using telemedicine, e.g. assessment requiring physical presence definitely presents a disadvantage with using such medium. So does it mean that telemedicine has a limit to target persons? Okay. Okay. Um, from the perspective which um, um, Mr. Francis has, has asked, telemedicine, like I rightly said, um, the limitations that may uh, um, be available on telemedicine has to do with when a patient uh, should decide on whether he has to physically see his physician or um, if he can go ahead and, um, uh, and um, uh, see his physicians using the telemedicine app or other teleconsult means. The thing is, whichever of these, most times a physician will still need to do some form of evaluation to evaluate the uh, condition, the state of the patient. One thing that can also help, which is not common in our client in, here in Nigeria, is that um, they are now Internet of Medical devices that are used. Like I said earlier, they are now sensor thermometers. There are also other um, um, vital um, devices that are vital statistic devices, collators, that picks up vitals for patients that are enable um, remote monitoring of the patient by the physicians. So notable use are uh, 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 beds being wired with sensors now where a number of patients with uh, um, the COVID-19 are being monitored without the physical presence of clinicians there. They're being used in other climes of the world. So if it is the collaboration of um, telemedicine and other device that can ensure a complete um, telehealth or teleconsult of, of patients, and so, like I rightly said, these are, are opportunities that abound for a number of people to answer, to come up with solutions to these challenges. Thank you. All right, thank you. So, Bala Seidu would like to know if you can get an app as an individual. Uh, of course, yes. If he sends his inquiries to the email, it will, it will be notably attended to. Okay, so another question, show of hands. Koko Udo, can you please unmute Koko Udo to ask his question? Koko Udo, please. Yeah. All right, so you can ask your Hello, question. Are you hearing me? Yes, I can hear you, sir. Me? Yeah, okay. you can go ahead with your question. I have this question. Hello? Hello, we can hear you, sir. Okay. I have this question last time, the last um, webinar we had, but I don't think there was even a specific answer. This is a new application, and this is a new application towards last year, this telemetry or whatever. But yes, we are now criticizing the healthcare profession. You know, it takes two, both the healthcare professionals and the care public. Okay. What are you doing now to criticize the patient that is not popular for the penetration of these apps and mm. the general change towards not physically seeing the doctor or the healthcare professional? So that this must be because it will test, it will, so that now it will be like the uh, problems you are having now. To help in turn. Doctors were very sensitive about healthcare or HMO or healthcare. But the general population were not sensitive. That's why they're very low for the Hello, sir. I'm not sure if it's my end. Can we hear his question? Yinka, can you hear his question? No, I, I, I prefer a context again. I couldn't hear. It was breaking up. Okay, so Mr. Coco, can you, can you? Repeat your question again. Did not hear you. Oh, sorry. Oh, so, or better still, you can drop it in the chat room. Okay, so while we wait for Mr. Coco, a question came from Mohamed Liman. Is it possible for me to have a customized app for my health facility? 
what about your registration with regulatory bodies? I'm think I'm guessing it's saying Vertebra's registration with regulatory bodies. Okay, okay of course. Of, of course you could of course you can have a a, a tailored um, solution to your organization and like we said um, these are bespoke solutions so they could suit your facility and uh, <clears throat> they could suit your facility and your needs um, with questions regarding your um, regarding the regulatory bodies of course these uh, can be answered once you have been contact once um, you contact us on the mail we could give you and various organizations, but of course, um, it, uh, Vatibra is a registered and um, duly respectable organization in the country. Thank you very much, Inka. Thank you very much, everyone, for your questions. If um, you have more questions or inquiries, please kindly send your questions to the contact on the presentation slide. I hand over now to Masumo. All right, Diala, thank you, Yenka. Thank you so very much. Um, we also like to appreciate everyone that has joined our session today. While we look forward to you joining the next, we hope you've been able to learn a few things and this will inspire you. Like uh, my colleagues have emphasized, just right before your screen, you have contact details in my website to visit for the questions. Please send them. Thank you so very much and have a pleasant afternoon. So th this would be we draw the curtains for today. Thank you everyone for joining. Thank you have all. a fantastic day. Thank you.